Good evening and a very warm welcome to this hour's English news package with radio and television Tong News for tonight. Making headlines. The Legislative Assembly has approved the Appropriation Bill 2022-2023. Crown Prince and Crown Princess with their four children to arrive today on a repatriation flights from Australia. And Saudi Arabia Tourism Minister visited Tonga today in a diplomatic visit. Now for the stories in detail. The Legislative Assembly has approved the Appropriation Bill 2022-2023. and This was passed in, in Parliament during deliberations of the whole House Committee on the budget for the new financial year. The Appropriation Bill 2022-2023 was passed after the third reading where 20 members vote for. And this is the second bill for 2022. Not only that, the bill was approved along with its amendment, the budget statement and government policies by the whole House Committee. The Legislative Assembly also approved Proposal No. 3, 2022, on the loan support which is more than 15 million per annum for the financial year 2022-2023. Meanwhile, the budget statement for the current financial year, which ends on June the 30th, was adjourned by the whole House Committee and the government submitted to Parliament their first parliamentary proposal, 2022. The Speaker then adjourned the deliberations until further notice. The budget for the new financial year is 764.7 million per annum, with 347 million funded by the government and 327 million by donor partners. Crown Prince Dubota Ulukalala and Crown Princess Sinaita Kala and their four children arrived today in a repatriation flights from Australia. The Crown Prince and his family have been residing in Canberra over the past years while he undertook postgraduate studies. In 2021, the Prince graduated with a Master of Diplomacy from the Australian National University. He previously earned his first master's degree, graduating in December 2018 with a Master of Military and Defence Studies from the same university. Meanwhile, over the weekend, Australia's Governor General Honourable David Hurley and Mrs Hurley hosted the Tongan Royals at Government House in Canberra. A statement from the Governor General said the strong and long-standing partnerships between Australia and Tonga is built on the closeness of our two peoples. His Excellency Mr Ahmed Aghil al Khatib, Minister of Tourism for Saudi Arabia, visited Tonga in a diplomatic visit today. His Excellency is the concurrent chairman of the Board of Directors of the Saudi Fund for Development. The Tourism Minister paid courtesy call on the Prime Minister of Tonga, Honourable Hokam Meliku, as well as Honourable Cabinet Ministers at the St. George Government Building. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Kingdom of Tonga formally established diplomatic relations on 14th of December 2020 when a joint meeting was signed in New York by the permanent representative of both kingdoms. The ministerial visit to Tonga was to explore matters of a common interest with the bilateral relations between the two countries and to pursue avenues to strengthen relations in all fields. Teachers teaching Tongan subject must do the responsibility to always teach in Tongan to preserve the culture. As part of the keynote address of the Prime Minister, also the Education Minister Hokav Miliku, during a Fayakoma Tonga Education Conference this morning. <laughs> The conference highlighted the importance of using the Tongan language and ways on how to present the traditional Tongan gala ceremony. A traditional Tongan gala ceremony was presented to the head of the government. The Prime Minister was also the Education Minister, Honourable Huakawa Meiliko. The theme of the education conference is Funua Pe Tangata. In his remarks, the Education Minister, Honourable Huakawa Meiliko, highlighted the significance of the Tongan language and that it needs to be preserved for future generations, despite the impacts of technology on today's generation. <laughs> Teachers, let us review the situation of the Tongan language and the literacy of our students in the Tongan subject. There's so much that needs to be done and our Tongan language is needed to be taught in the schools as a way of preserving it for future generations. During the program, a textbook was distributed to the Tongan teachers present at the conference. 
The Foyanko Ma'atonga book includes vision for the teachers 2015-2025 and is the foundation for developing students' learning in the Tongan subject. The Foyanko Ma'atonga conference runs for three days. The conference began this morning and will end on Friday. Her Royal Highness Princess Salote Mafile Opilolevu Tuita was the guest of honor in a celebrated reception in honor of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II Platinum Jubilee and Birthday, hosted by the British High Commissioner to Tonga, Her Excellency Lucy Joyce. The Honorable Prime Minister Hukawa Miriku was present at last night's events as he represented the government of Tonga with a speech. One of the issues he mentioned in his remarks as he thanked the government of the United Kingdom for all their assistance after the volcanic eruption and also their commitment to keep Tonga safe from COVID-19 pandemic. The United Kingdom and the Kingdom of Tonga enjoy a special and long-standing uh, friendship. A long history cultivated by our respective monarchies with strong ties between our royal families and as proud partners within the Commonwealth. The United Kingdom and the Kingdom of Tonga have fond memories of our beloved Maid Queen Salote and her open carriage in the rain during the procession of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, coronation on 2nd of June, 1953. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, head of Commonwealth tour, also included a visit to Tonga on the 19th and 20th of December, 1953. This was the beginning of many visits by members of respective royal families to the United Kingdom and the Kingdom of Tonga. He asked that the government of Tonga is looking forward to do its part to strengthen these links throughout diplomatic relations through sports and through the academic scholarships available to talent the students from Tonga through the United Kingdom. He also thanked the UK for support in terms of climate change because this is a very real issue for islands in the Pacific. The UK have shown leadership and commitment to cut greenhouse gases emission through the UK's Climate Change Act and contribution to Green Climate Fund. The Honourable Prime Minister also emphasised that Tonga valued the United Kingdom's support of the ocean living in the world's largest ocean means that the UK's Blue Barrel program is a key priority to the future of marine conservation policy deeply designate to healthy, free from pollution and properly protected. Honourable Hugawa Meiriku is looking forward for the opportunities to lend Tonga support as the government found values and issues that bind the Commonwealth together, tackling climate change and poverty, boosting trade and promoting sustainable development. Reporting for Radio and Television Tonga News, I'm Ali Sitobo. From deliberations of the whole House Committee yesterday, the Noble Number no. 2 representative for Tongatapu is requesting a review in the tax act collected from the tax allotments. The concern by Lord Doivagano is to have the government collect their taxes rather than the noble estate holder. The issue was raised during deliberations of the whole House Committee on the Ministry of Lands, Natural Resources and the Surveys vote. <laughs> What I'm proposing is that the Tax Act should be reviewed, especially with the tax allotments collected by the noble estate holders from the nobles' tax allotments. The taxes collected from every household is 80 seniti, but I suggest that the government should be the one collecting these taxes, which will also benefit them. Lord Duivarano also highlighted to the public to understand that no one has the right to sell any land. There are many people who are dividing up their land to be sold. The ministry should create a program to help the people understand there is no such thing as selling of land in Tonga. I believe the program would help them be informed of this. According to Clause 12 of the Lands Act, if anyone sells or tries to sell their land to another person, he will be charged accordingly and if found guilty, will be liable to imprisonment not exceeding 10 years. However, the vote of the Ministry of Lands, Natural Resources and the Survey increased by 1.17 million baanga. 
And almost five months since the devastating eruption and tsunami in Tonga, farmers are rebuilding their crops and harvesting those that survived the event. Part of its crop was blanketed in ash after the eruption, but Heilala Vanilla's chief executive Jennifer Boji said as the eruption happened when the vanilla beans were newly formed on the vine, the robust and waxy beans fared well. But had the volcano erupted a few months later, during harvesting season, it could have been disastrous, as she said. Bojis also emphasized that half of their vanilla operation is in Wawa'o and they were not affected by the ashfall. It was only the island of Tongatapu and Ewa. They have a vanilla operation on Ewa and those farmers were impacted. There were a couple of vanilla farmers that had low-lying farms and they were impacted by the tsunami, but in general, most of the farmers weren't impacted by the tsunami. It was the volcanic ash. Despite that, Boji said this year's vanilla crop appeared to be higher quality than last year's. She also said that they work quite closely with plant and food research and they were able to get some soil samples from Tongatapu and test them in Wawa'o. It's actually kind of positive thing. She's not a soil scientist, but from what they understand from the researchers, the impact will actually be quite positive on the soil structure for those farms that were impacted. But some above ground crops were not so lucky, and Boji said that some Tongan growers cultivated more than one type of crop on their land. Jennifer Boji's think. The thing that's been the biggest impact for the farmers is that they obviously have other crops, not just the vanilla, and it's those crops that are a bit less robust and were impacted by the volcanic ash, which obviously impacts their livelihoods. The company have been working with the mainstreaming of Rural Development Innovation Tonga Trust, MODI, to support communities still rebuilding after the event. Reporting for Radio and Television Tonga News, I'm Alice Dupo. And that wraps up this evening's English news package. But before we part, let's have one final look at today's top stories. The Legislative Assembly has approved the Appropriation Bill 2022-2023. Crown Prince and Crown Princess with their four children arrived today on a repatriation flight from Australia. And Saudi Arabia Tourism Minister visited Tonga today in a diplomatic visit. And that's it for tonight. Thank you for your company. I'm Bhavanato Paula. Have a pleasant evening.